In the US, I would still be working now, and I'm 69 years old. Meet Andrew Taylor. He is a fellow YouTuber who moved from America to Malaysia eight years ago. Andrew told me why he left sunny Florida for retirement abroad, the biggest misconceptions people in the US have about Malaysia, and the main differences in mentality between Americans and Malaysians. I'm Max, an entrepreneur and YouTuber from Singapore. Let's go. What's the some stereotypes about a Malaysia from the US? I think the biggest stereotype is that it's a Muslim country. And it's not a Muslim country. I mean, that's the official religion, but it's a secular country. They allow all religions. I think that's what most people think. And that's what I get the most backlash from, is how could you live there with all their, it's not like that. You don't know, you don't understand. Don't talk about something you don't understand. Come and visit and see for yourself. You know, it's, it's a wonderful place. How would you compare people, like in terms of how people think, the mentality of people, Americans and Malaysians? Well, I think Malaysians tend to be much more trusting of the government and requirements of the government. Well, I think the U.S. has gone way overboard in the other direction of people demanding their freedom and, you know, they, they want complete freedom to do anything they want. Like, for instance, here, the country readily went along with all the requirements during COVID you know, the lockdowns. I mean, yeah, there was grumbling and complaining, but not like in the US. I mean, everyone wore a mask, everyone stayed home. You couldn't even cross state lines, you know. That would never work in the US. There would have been riots in the street. Mm. But people, I think, either they trust the government or they realize that that was the right thing to do, at least in that situation. So people are so friendly and kind here and they'll do things for you. It seems like they're just brought up that way with, a more kind manner. I don't know if it, it's Islam, you know, could be partly that, but the Malays in general are very, very kind people. I mean, mm. my viewers, honestly, and I believe them, they send me emails and they say, if you need help with anything, just let me know. Mm. You know, that's, that's how so they sweet. are. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I've had people, I had someone drive by once and said, oh, I just drove by your place and we're having an open house this weekend. Can you come? You know. Wow. That's so nice. Tell me about your YouTube channel. Do you monetize it anyhow at the moment? For some reason, I got started and within three weeks I was monetized. So, and yeah. that's, from what I understand, pretty unheard of. You know? Yeah, it's, it's so good, yeah. <laughs> and this old guy, you know, starting with my phone, with my phone with no microphone and yeah. stuff, I only had five videos and I got monetized. That's amazing. Because we, we've been teaching YouTube for a long time, like how to start a YouTube channel, and like three weeks, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I was, well, I was blown away Yeah. because I just, you know, I was doing it sort of a lark Then it just took off and I'm like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I'm getting all these subscribers and, you know, yeah. so it was, it was cool. I'm not in it for the money, although, I mean, I'd like to make a little money. I, it basically pays my rent now. But also the amazing part is like use just your phone. I always say to people that if you have something to share and you have an idea you don't need much to start to try because basically you need a clip mic and your phone and some idea and like some passion maybe to tell stories if you ever thought about launching and monetizing your youtube channel to generate passive income like how andrew's channel cover his rent which is amazing consider joining the early bird list of shim which is side hustle youtube mastery program i won't be showing you what advanced equipment to buy, nor will you learn fancy editing techniques. Instead, I'll teach you real stuff, how to choose the right niche for your channel, find viral video ideas to generate a lot of views, and make money from YouTube. No special skills required. All you need is your phone and the desire to improve your life and share something with people. Link in description, join the list, and I'll let you know when we open signups for the program. What do you think America can learn from Malaysia? Well, I think they can learn how to get along a little better because there's all these different cultures here and they all seem to do pretty well. Mm. I mean, you know, of course there's minor things, but in general, I think everyone's so proud of their country because of that, you know, because Malaysia is accepting of different religions and different people and different cultures. Okay, what's the three most irritating things for you about Malaysia? The one main thing I think that irritates me aside from the traffic, which is the number one most irritating thing here. Number two would be, I think that people are too either not allowed or just trained not to break rules or try to figure out a solution that's, that's gonna work without going strictly by the rules, mm. which is very common in the US. I mean, you just, I mean, you, you can bend the rules. Most people in their 
jobs here feel like they can't bend the rules at all. You yeah. know, like I'm just talking mostly about in the condo here. You know, just silly things like having to get the license plate number of the delivery truck that's bringing my TV. You know, mm. that's and I'm like, you're kidding, right? You know, <laughs> why do you need that? <laughs> if I was the person doing that, I would have just said, oh, just put any number in. It doesn't matter. But they yeah. won't do that. She actually called the place and got the number for me. It's another example of how wonderful and caring and, and generous they are in spirit. I mean, she had no reason to do that for me. Do you miss anything from the U.S. or from your life in the U.S.? Well, I think it's really hard to find good pork ribs here, but that's obvious. I mean, you can find them more in Penang because it's more majority Chinese, but I miss that. I mean, there's just not enough pork ribs, barbecued <laughs> ribs, you know, that's, yeah, come, I guess some of the Chinese restaurants have them. But. Yeah, come to Singapore for it. Yeah, they I'll have show, them there. I'll show you places, yeah. Yeah, great, yeah. What do you feel when you fly to the U.S.? When I'm going to Florida, it's feeling of going home because that's the area I grew up in. Yeah. I, I worked most of my adult life in Washington, D.C., but I grew up in Florida, and it feels like home. And I tell you, you can watch the news and see all the horrible things they say about the U.S. I'm certainly affected by that. I think, oh gosh, that just sounds horrible. It just sounds horrible. But in reality, when I went back, I don't notice those things. I still have the same friends. They still have the same mindset. I'm not fighting with everybody everywhere I go. You know, it's just, it's just normal. And it, I think that the, it's just extreme what they show on the news about what's going on in the U.S. Still, I don't want to be there, but it's, I think when you travel there, you just aren't going to notice it as being as horrible as they make it out to be on the news. Why did you uh, move out from U.S.? Why did you leave U.S. in the first place? When I first started thinking about it, I was about um, 55. So I hadn't even really started thinking much about retirement. And then I met someone online and had a long distance relationship for five years, back and forth from Penang. I just loved it here and mm. realized that I could afford to retire at 60, which is almost unheard of in the US. You, I mean, <laughs> what age people normally would retire? Well, the US. earliest you can retire and get your social security is 62, which is when I got mine. But now I think it's 67 for full benefits. I get 75% benefits because I took it at 62. But then I get all those years of it that you didn't, that I wouldn't have gotten if it was 67. Uh -huh. you know? And you could die before 67, you know. <laughs> so. yeah. Let's imagine you would retire in the U.S. What would be your lifestyle like? How it's different versus your lifestyle here? Well, the thing there is that I just wouldn't be able to afford to do almost anything. And it's surprising, Max, because I pay for my condo in Florida. It has no mortgage, you know. Technically, it's like free to live there, right? Yeah. But the condo fee is more than I pay in rent here for this whole place, you know. So the condo fee, additional health insurance because not everything's covered under Medicare. And just eating out and food in general, everything, everything costs more. Everything costs more. I mean, in the U.S., I would still be working now, and I'm 69 years old. Honestly, I just never felt like I had enough money to save any money. You know, I was always living just to live. You know, it's fine for foreigners to come in and retire here. Because of the exchange rate, our money goes so much farther. It's not the same for Malaysians. Malaysians are having a terrible time affording to retire, similar to the people in the US. Now, unfortunately, if you're in Malaysia, you can't go to a cheaper country. It's sad. You mentioned in one of the videos that you rent out your place in Florida, right? Yes. So it gives you passive income to comfortably live in Kiel. Yes, it does supplement my social security, which is my only other income. My apartment in Florida is much smaller than this, mm. but rents for three times as much, you know. So it more than pays for my rent here, and that's good. How much is this social security package, if I may ask? It depends on how much money you put into it. If you make more money, you're getting more from your social security. So, I mean, mine's less than $2,000 a month, getting closer to 2,000 now. So for you, basically, it's like 2,000 from there, 2,000 from the condo. It's pretty comfortable life, I think, for 4K USD. Yeah, it's, it's a very comfortable life. I was thinking about it before you came over today. I have a better lifestyle here in retirement than I had in the US when I was working. That's kind of amazing. My place is nicer. 
I get to eat out more. It's just awesome. It gave me a chance to retire that I never thought I would ever have. The only thing that's prohibitively expensive here is alcohol, you know, <laughs> which is yeah. a drag. But then you don't drink too much because it costs too much. What would be the monthly budget, let's say, for two in their 60s or 70s in Malaysia, in Pinanco, in Kiel? If you're happy eating at Mamox and more casual eateries, you can easily do it for a couple, for, I'd say for 2,500 US dollars a month. Now I know people who have much more than that and they mm. live a little better. They travel more, they eat out in more expensive restaurants, things like that. But I find it, I do it for 2,000 a month and it's just fine. I never run out of money. It's plenty, I can go out. I don't go and spend five, 600 ringgit for meals, except maybe once every three months or something. But I don't just eat at Mamox mm. and street food, very little. Mm. Although I had chicken rice today, which <laughs> is good. This place, it's like one bedroom? It's one bedroom. They technically say it's 910 square feet, but they're counting this space here. So it's yeah. really 810 square feet. How much is this place? 400 US. <laughs> a month, yeah. Some people prob probably faint it right now. Like, very popular place for, let's say, Westerners in Asia, it's Thailand. So many people ended up in there. Would you, like, let's say, what's the, let's say, consideration process? Maybe for you, like, you're here, you love Malaysia, but for someone who is thinking to, to retire here, and, like, the, most, the more obvious option is Thailand. Thailand's a very obvious option, and a lot of people love it. I think the infrastructure is not quite as the level of here in KL anyway. I just think it's the language barrier is the main, main difference. You know, right. I wouldn't probably have moved here if English hadn't been so widely spoken because I'm just an idiot and I don't know any other languages. So it's so huge for me. And I guess you can get by in Thailand with English, but it's just not the same. You know, I recently have been to Cambodia and I think that that would be, if things, went south for me here and I had, couldn't stay if they kicked me out for some reason, I would go to Cambodia because it's a very affordable lifestyle similar to here. And at least in Siem Reap, English is widely spoken and there's a ton of Western places there. You know, I, would, I think the food scene in Siem Reap is better than KL, but I'm talking about Western food. What's your main principles in life? something like really important for you? Well, the last job I had was at a church, if you can believe that. And it was a Unitarian church, which is very liberal. Their sort of one slogan is deeds, not creeds. And I think the slogan that they use for the church, for that religion, is very meaningful to me. And it's the inherent worth and dignity of every person. And that's sort of something I try to strive to live with. Let me show you some magic. If you click on this video, I will disappear and reappear again. Let's try it. Three, two, one.